Unit 11, Cultural Integrity. What is cultural integrity? What do we mean when we say cultural integrity? Well, the sociologist E. Adamson Hubble said, culture is an integrated system of learned behavior patterns, which are characteristic of members of a society and which are not the result of biological inheritance. So things that we learn to do as part of a specific society. And integrity can be divine, defined as a steadfast adherence to a code of values, particularly moral or ethical. So cultural integrity, therefore, is the adherence to the values of the culture in question. So what's this have to do with food? Well, most of us are familiar with the idea of comfort food, which can evoke nostalgic or sentimental feelings and improve our moods. We may serve these foods at special occasions, or more commonly, we may just have them when we need a lift. Yeah, brownies or maybe meatloaf, I don't know. Such foods are almost always those we had as children and may be common to our families, and maybe in a larger sense to a society that we identify with, or a culture that we identify with. Foods common to a group or society can be one of the things that help bind members with a common identity. Food and culture, certain foods are not only common to a society or a culture, but may be essential, particularly in a religious context where some foods may be an integral part of a religious observance. Having access to cultural foods can be an important part of maintaining a cultural identity and can help ease assimilation or integration into another society. So you, there's an important part of your culture that you're able to hang on to with access to these cultural foods while assimilating into a different society. Food and cultural integrity, well, food, of course, is only one part of a culture and it's only one ingredient that helps maintain cultural identity and integrity. But food can easily be the most obvious and most cohesive force of cultural integrity, possibly second only to religious practices and observances. Take a look at some comfort foods from around the world. Mwai, a mixture of noodles, vegetables, meat, or seafood often made to order. A Ghanaian delicacy of mashed plantain, mashed yam, peanuts with eggs as a garnish. Korean pan-fried mushrooms with pine nuts. Or collard greens, which are a popular food in the southern United States. So how can urban food production affect cultural integrity? Well. Traditional methods of food production are large monocultures. You've got a farmer that grows corn or soybeans or alternates corn and soybeans. Um, farms that produce huge amounts of strawberry or asparagus or cauliflower or whatever. And entire farms are often devoted to one or two food items and a handful at most. And these items are often selected with the broadest range of consumers in mind maximizing the market and therefore maximizing profits, they're often shipped hundreds or thousands of miles from where they're produced. Urban agriculture being closer to the consumer can be in a much better position to respond to the needs of the consumer, which can incidentally improve profit for the producer. If you have certain cultural foods, foods that you want for simply cultural identity or for religious observance, and one of the only places to get it is a local grower, 
that local grower may be able to charge a little more for it. Finally, urban food production meeting local needs. Local urban food production is generally done on a much smaller scale than non-urban agriculture. This means a smaller consumer base is required to meet the needs of the producers in terms of sale volume. And this smaller base allows the local urban producer, unlike the large traditional farm, to be much more responsive to the desires of the community and consumers and still be profitable. Being responsive and producing the foods that local consumers want can help maintain cultural integrity for local groups while maintaining profit margins for local producers. It just fits. And that's the end of this unit.